Okay. Uh -huh. What would be the name for this? You can just say out loud what the name would be here. One, two, three, four, butanoic acid. Right. So what's the suffix for carboxylic acids? Oic acid. So this would be butanoic acid. Good. Uh, and we can just say out loud what would be the name for this. The one at the bottom? Sure. Uh, formic acid. Good. And the IUPAC name? Mm. Methanoic acid? Ethanoic. Oh. But what? That's so contradictory. Form, doesn't that mean one? Yes. So this was right and this was wrong. Oh, okay. So yeah, it was a contradictory because we made a mistake. Good catch. What should this have been called? I was so mad. I was like, that's a bad exception. Ac Acetanoic. Good. Acetic acid. You got it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I did that last time. So as we've been discussing, acet always, always, all, almost always means two carbons, except for acetone. Acet means two carbons. Uh, and then the convention is, it's, instead of being called acid, anoic acid or whatever, it's just called acetic acid. This is probably a name you've heard mentioned many times in lab lecture. This is a very commonly used acid, acetic acid. No one calls it ethanoic acid. Uh, everyone calls it acetic acid. That's formic acid. Right. And I'm sorry, the IUPAC name is meth and oh. Oh yeah, IUPAC name is methanoic acid. No one calls it that, everyone calls it formic acid. As we've seen, form is always the common root for one carbon, just like meth and IUPAC. Good. giving a name to this. It's good that you started the number numbering from the right. However, um, we made a mistake that we've seen in a couple of the uh, previous oh, problems. E. Uh, <laughs> What's wrong with us? <laughs> well, I hope this is going to come up on the exam now because we've seen it a few times. I think this is a pretty popular I test on exams. It's come so. up the exam. Well, now, now you're going to be prepared for it. So, and no. everyone else is going to fall off this track. So. It's on like my page of 10 times in writing. I still can't remember. <laughs> Okay, well, so here we have E, um, because again, the substituents are on opposite sides. It would also have been legal here to use trans, 2-butenoic acid, good. Uh, what will be the name for this? Yeah, you need to say it out loud. What was your name? 3 oxo butanoic acid. 3 oxo butanoic acid. One, two, three. Okay. Um, why does this get higher priority? Well, for one thing, it's more oxidized. It's it has three bonds to oxygens and it's terminal. But just the oxidation would do it because this has three bonds to oxygen and this only has two. So this would be 3 oxo butanoic acid. So we have to name this as a prefix. No problem. Good. Say this one out loud too. Mm. 
one cyclohexyl. Oh, it has. <laughs> Isn't it one cyclohexyl? Isn't it? I don't know. I feel like we saw it in the book. They don't call it. Think about how we named cyclic aldehydes. The way we name cyclic aldehydes is very similar to how the IUPAC way of naming is cyclic carboxylic acids. You remember how did we name cyclic aldehydes? Cyclohexane carbaldehyde. Mm. Right. So the key thing is that they had a carbaldehyde suffix. So cyclohexane carbonylic acid? That's pretty close. So the suffix here is just carboxylic acid. Oh, that's what I said. Oh, I thought you said carbonylic acid. No, <laughs> the first time. Ah, oh yeah, all right, maybe you got it right. Carboxylic acid. And we have to say that this is cyclo... Now it's not hexol, it's cyclohexane, because this is an IUPAC name. Or I don't know why, just because that's the convention anyway. All right, and this would usually be written as one word, cyclohexane carboxylic acid. Wouldn't the acid be separately? Yeah, that's right. So this is one word, this is a separate word, that's right. No. So this is a very logical suffix. Um, so just like with aldehydes, the suffix for the straight chain is different from the suffix for the cyclic. The suffix for the straight chain is just oic acid, but the suffix for the ring is just carboxylic acid. It's a great big suffix. So this would be cyclohexane carboxylic acid. What would, what would this be? Cyclopentane carboxylic acid. Yeah, cyclopentane carboxylic acid. All right, so this is analogous to how we named straight chain and cyclic aldehydes. And again, maybe the reason why they have two totally different suffixes here is there's no way to get the carboxy carbon in the ring. There's no way to get the carboxy carbon in the ring, so maybe it makes sense that we need a different way of naming this. Let's just say out loud. Is that circle like benzene? 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 Yeah, so we need to recognize this is one way of writing benzene. We need to say out loud what would be the name for this. Benzoic acid. That's right. This is just a name that just has to be memorized. Everyone calls this benzoic acid. What would be the name of this? Benzoic acid as well. Yeah. So this is just another way of writing benzene. Uh, when you're actually doing problems, it can save you a lot of time. To, in, instead of writing out the ring, you just write pH. Could you not call it one phenyl carboxylic acid? Seems logical, but uh, that's not what people do. Okay. People call this a benzoic acid. Maybe not because we're not calling all the rest ill substituents. Yeah. And yeah. We're not calling this um, one one cyclopentyl carboxylic yeah, acid. Yeah, it was the same with the aldehydes. Let's see. For the aldehydes, no. um, I think you're thinking how we need oh, ketones. For ketones. Yeah, for ketones, we sometimes use the ill. Oh, this is this is kind of confusing. Everything has a different way of. There was a. This, I was sitting in on this. Uh, this class once for this one OCHEM professor where he was trying to teach the nomenclature. And he was, he was, uh, he's a guy that, uh, not a young guy anymore, he'd been around for a while. And he was saying, yeah, I was around at, at those conferences back in the 40s and the 50s when we came up with all these names. And you know, you gotta remember, you know, we just go to this conference, you know, and we just all get drunk and start coming up with these names. <laughs> so that, that's the explanation for some oh of the confusion God, here. So. They get to get drunk and come up with these names while we right. sit here and memorize. So <laughs> I don't know if that's a true story or if he's just trying to spice up the lecture a little bit, but uh, sometimes it seems logical that there might have been some alcohol involved in the, when they when I came up with these names.